A Life Electric, The Story of Nikola Tesla by Azade Westergaard, illustrated by Julia Sarda. At the stroke of midnight on July 10th, 1856, thunder clapped, lightning flashed, and a baby boy was born. He'll be a child of the storm, his nurse said. No, his mother replied, a child of light. She did not know then that her son, Nicola, would grow up to be both. One of the most important electrical inventors in the world then and now. Nicola grew up in a farmhouse in a village called Smilian, at the foot of a wooded hill next door to a barn in a small chapel where his father preached. He loved animals and never missed a day cradling and feeding his family's chickens, roosters, pigeons, and geese. He had many playmates, but his best friend was a cat the magnificent macaque. When Nicola was three, he stroked his cat, and something remarkable happened. Macaque's back was a sheet of light, and my hand produced a shower of sparks, loud enough to be heard all over the place. Nicola had never seen anything like it. His mother said, stop playing with the cat. He might start a fire. His father said, this is nothing but electricity. The same thing you see on the trees in a storm. He wondered, is nature a gigantic cat? If so, who strokes its back? From that moment on, Nicola could not stop thinking about electricity. Just like his mother, who sewed clothing by hand and built new tools to help with housework, Nicola had a gift for invention. He dreamt of flying like the pigeons and geese on on his farm, so he jumped off the roof of his barn, holding only an old umbrella. His bones didn't break, but he was bed-bound for weeks. Before he was six, Nicola had designed a metal hook for catching frogs, a pop gun that shattered windows and got him punished, and a rotating motor powered by fast, flapping wings, 16 June bugs. When he was eight, Nicola fell in love with books. He remembered everything he read and soon carried whole volumes in his head. His father feared he'd go blind and discourage so much reading, but Nicola couldn't stop. While the family slept, he made his own candles, stuck towels in the cracks of his bedroom door to hide the light, and worked his way through his father's library of In school, Nicola got high marks in literature, sciences, and math. His dream was to study electricity when he grew up. But his father expected him to follow in his footsteps and become a priest. When he was 17, Nicola contracted cholera, a serious disease that left him barely able to move. Everyone feared he was at death's door. Nicola's father promised him he could study anything he wanted if he only got better. Nikola recovered quickly and soon enrolled in college to pursue his passion, electrical engineering. When he was 26, Nikola and a friend were strolling through a park and reciting poetry aloud when the solution to a scientific puzzle came to him like a flash of lightning, a puzzle he had thought about for years, a puzzle his university professor had said was impossible to solve. A detailed image appeared in Nicola's mind. 
a motor sending electric currents along a wire, forward then backward, forward then backward, like the endless rush and receding sweep of the ocean tide. Nicola had discovered a new way to transmit electricity over long distances. And he knew it was an invention that would soon power the world. Nicola could think of only one person who would understand the importance of his idea. So he set sail across the Atlantic from Europe to America. When he arrived in New York, his pockets held four pennies, some handwritten poems, notes for a flying machine invention, and a letter of introduction to Thomas Edison, the inventor of the first practical electric light bulb. New York, New York... The two men worked together briefly, but they disagreed about everything, especially about the future of electricity. Nicola had no choice but to leave and find a way to develop his electric motor on his own. After years with little success, Nicola parted with George Westinghouse, a powerful businessman who invited him to present his invention at the 1893 Chicago's World Fair. Together, the men and their workers toiled day and night, building the electric motors that Nicola had once seen so clearly in his mind. On the fair's opening day, thousands of visitors from around the world gathered. The President of the United States pressed a gold telegraph button that set the fairground's electric machinery in motion. And for the first time in history... Over a hundred thousand light bulbs lit up at once. The crowds cheered, trumpets blared, and flags unfurled. Nicola's city of light had changed the world forever. Soon, once darkened homes, office buildings, and city streets were illuminated. The wheels of streetcars and electric trains now whirled, and factories hummed through the night. Newspaper headlines flashed Nicola's name on every continent. They called him the Wizard of Electricity. Nicola's invention was a success, but the businessmen who helped him said he was running out of money. Nicola was trusting and thankful that this man had believed in his idea, so he gave away the rest of the rights to his invention. And instead of becoming one of the richest men in the world, Nicola ended up with nothing. Nicola had a gift for invention, but he was also a creature of habit. Even as he grew old, he didn't stop memorizing poems by heart, or solving scientific equations in his head, or taking long walks up and down New York's cobblestone streets. He also never stopped loving animals, which is why every morning and afternoon, with a bag filled with birdseed in his pocket, Nicola stopped by Bryant Park and the steps of St. Patrick's Cathedral to cradle and feed the city's pigeons. He never missed a day. And if he was ever sick, or when he got too old to walk, Nicola hired messenger boys to visit the flocks on his behalf. I've been feeding pigeons, thousands of them, for years. Thousands of them. For who can tell, he said. Nicola always looked for ill or injured pigeons, to either nurse at home or hand deliver to the local animal hospital. Before making a diagnosis, he would peer into each bird's eyes, then inspect their wings, beaks, and feet. Caring for homeless, hungry, or sick birds is the delight of my life, he said. Nicola's New York home was almost always a humble hotel room where his windows were open for pigeons to come and go where neat rows of nesting baskets lined his bedroom bureaus, where bowls filled with fresh water and seeds lay waiting on his sill. As the years went on, people began taking Nicola's inventions for granted. No one recognized the wizard of electricity on the city streets anymore. Now newspapers flash headlines about an unusual old man scattering seeds in the park. They called him the Pigeon Charmer of New York. And when reporters asked about his devotion to birds, he simply said, All things from childhood are still dear to me. When the old man died in his hotel room, penniless and alone, with the windows wide open and birdseed on his sill, 
the mayor of New York announced the sad news on the radio. He was a feather in the cap of the whole human race. Nicola was gone, but, he was, but now he was remembered as thousands of mourners from around the world flocked to attend the funeral in honor of his life. His name was Nikola Tesla, a gifted inventor, a creature of habit, a lover of animals, a friend to humankind, a child of the storm, a child of the light, a human flash of lightning far ahead of his time.